But overall, I agree with Sean. Uh, he creates content on YouTube under actual Justice Warrior if you want to check out his content. But what he says there is totally true. Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we're going to talk about the second half of this Majority Report video where they get into squatting after they completely embarrass themselves on the issue of crime because they try to defend squatting, but in the most cowardly, weak-willed way humanly possible, they never actually address a single case that's actually going on that has made this an issue. Instead, they talk about these abstract concepts that are not happening, pivot to some dope in Australia who's advocating for people to steal homes. And this is because the majority report are propagandists and they know for a fact if they presented any of the actual cases that have people animated out there to the public, they would be indefensible. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th in Austin, Texas, I will be at MindsFest. Link the tickets, top of the description, promo code AJW for 20% off. Now, I want to start with a quick correction. In the beginning of the previous video, they were actually interacting with a caller, a guy called Dave from Jamaica, and I thought he was so dumb as a person, it might have been a troll caller. So right off the bat, they opened this video with a caller, and the caller is speaking with the Jamaican accent, but I have to be honest, after listening to the entirety of this person's call, I think that maybe just maybe this guy might be a troll but I have been told time and time again that this is a legitimate person calling in and it is possible that who they're referring to in this phone call as the person who's covering crime and squatting issues is actually Anna Kasparian which makes Emma's comments about people being victimized by crime getting titillated by that victimization all the more worse. I'm so, but it's it's sort you're you're right, Bender. But it's also people like get titillated by it. To be honest with you, that haven't experienced it before. Yeah, just for clarity, if this is about Anna, one, it's cowardly for them to talk crap about her for thirty minutes and not name her, and two, Emma, who I thought was a friend of Anna Kasparian, saying that she got titillated by being victimized in a crime that was a sexual assault is absolutely horrible. Now, like I said, you can watch the full video about the crime portion of this segment linked in the description, but let's get on to the squatting issue because these guys are showing their infinite cowardice throughout the whole course of this section of the video. But people see homeless people, uh, you know, uh, people, how is people see homeless people and they feel unsafe. So then they distinctly, they, they, they correlate that immediately with crime. Um, and so that I really do think, and then that's why we probably see this, uh, you know, this, this, I'm seeing this everywhere. Mainstream media is going wild with this. I heard on like the radio, like one of the morning zoo shows the other day, the whole squatting issue, which yeah, has been a thing forever. Squat, first of all, squatters, there is no squatters rights law in New York. So first of all, I just want to point out that Matt Bender, absolute buffoon, idiot in every possible way, as I proved in the previous video. And a simple Google search will tell you that yes, there is a thing called squatters rights in New York law. This is the adverse possession statutes. Anyone can look them up. And yes, they're in all 50 states. But what makes this particular case even more egregious for Bender to talk about is that we actually had a 2019 amendment, two amendments that have created the problem that we're seeing right here where people are able to squat with just 30 days. And it's almost impossible to get these people out of your property without going through the lengthy eviction process. So let me break that down for you as well. So so again, anybody can look this up, but it's two changes in city law from 2019 that now dictate that landlords cannot boot a squatter without a special proceeding and have to file a lawsuit in order to get them out. And these amendments are actually quite simple. The New York Real Property Actions Proceedings Law number 711 was amended to say that occupants of a dwelling or housing accommodation can't be kicked out without, quote, a special proceeding. Now, the reason this small, seemingly innocuous tweak has led to such problems is because there's a huge backlog in tenant court, and this possibly has to do with the fact that we had the eviction moratorium and people just stopped paying the rent during that period. Period of time. So even if you catch one of these would-be squatters in your property before the 30-day time period, like that case in Queens, New York, where there was somebody who broke in to this woman's deceased mother's home. We have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met Adele Andaloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. 
She's in the process of selling it. No, he left it. But she's been locked out. She claimed squatters moved in on February 6 and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. You end up in a situation where the police can't adjudicate it on the fly, so they end up telling you to go to court, but your first court date is after the 30-day period, and then you have to go through eviction proceedings that take multiple years. So that woman who was arrested for changing the locks on her own property did so within 30 days, but it didn't matter due to the fact that you required this special proceeding. On top of that, what they won't tell you because they don't cover any individual case is that that man on the local news segment, Brian Rodriguez, who said that he wanted some payment for the work. He didn't show me a lease. This, this is a bill. This is a bill for work he says he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. So how does this all end then? When do you leave? The way it ends is, is either she pays me my money that I put into the house, pay me the money and I'll leave, or send me to court and we deal with the judge in court. It's that simple is trying to extort her for $18,000. Now, of course, they're not gonna cover somebody breaking into a dead relative's home, stealing it, changing the locks, and trying to extort a homeowner when they're trying to sell it because they're trying to pretend this away. But Binder, of course, dead wrong right here, embarrassingly so, doesn't understand that, of course, every state has adverse possession laws, and specifically in New York City, this is why we're seeing problems because some of these tenant rights kick in in 30 days. There's no like actual like um, squatters rights in New York, at least um, there should be. But um... to the extent that exists anywhere, it's because the alternative is brutality that people actually can't uh, fathom, even in like bygone years. Like that's why squatters laws exist in like England or whatever. It's because like the otherwise you, you just can't. It, because we're so used to enforcing like bending society towards the capitalist needs now that we can't even fathom how these sorts of rights could have ever been enshrined for people that just need shelter. So this absolute doofus from behind the camera, I've been informed is also named Matt. I believe his name is Matt Leach. And he's like, listen, the reason why we have these all the way back to England is because we have to fight back against the brutality of the capitalist system. Now, of course, these rights actually predate the United Kingdom's capitalist economy. They go back to feudal times. So ridiculously stupid point in every possible way but again i'm waiting for them to bring up a single case a single modern case that people are covering they won't do that because they're too cowardly to do so so adela you're getting arrested right now I'm being arrested for what for being, for being in my house, for being in my own home and, not, and where's anymore. your lease? She's fighting the house it's not her house anymore my deed That's is current and legal her. arrested for unlawful eviction she changed the locks on a man who claims he lives there. While they pretend that these rights don't exist, but they should exist, and this is totally a non-problem, even though we can all see it being covered in our day-to-day -day lives in the media, and we see the real people who are being extorted by these particular schemes. I mean, even the phrasing, squatters versus tenants' well, rights, but they're one and the same. It's just one is used to say, look at this delinquent over here. Now, of course, Emma, the silver spoon brat of this show, has decided to say, listen, squatters' rights and tenant rights are one and the same and look at the language that they're using because you know how the left operates anytime there's something that they don't like they just want to change the words around it because that will solve the problem but the thing is emma they're not the same they're actually quite different that's the point point. and in fact if you look at the different various proposals in order to address this situation of these scammers stealing properties from people the basics are to distinguish between them and regular ordinary tenants require them to show proof of rent paid, proof of a rental agreement, you know, basic, simple things like that. My bill is simple. It's common sense. All we want to do is close the loophole in the law to say to residents, if you, or to say to a squatter, if you don't have right, if you don't have a lease, if you don't have a payment of rent um, and you have those documents, or if you don't have those documents, then you do not get to stay. You are a trespasser and you'll be removed from the property by law enforcement. They'll be able to do their job. And by the way, some of these proposals are way too moderate in my mind. The state assemblyman that is on board for changing this, his big reform, other than having proof of rent, proof of tenancy, is a 45-day waiting period before those rights kick in, which, by the way, is still too short, and it's only 15 days more than the 30-day waiting period. Even the city councilwoman, Palladino, who is going after this particular issue. Councilwoman Vicky Palladino says part of the solution is to change the law, which allows people to claim squatters' rights after living in a place for 30 days. She wants it changed to 100 180 days. 
They own the property and they have no rights. Squatter rights, oxymoron. Squatters have no rights. Only wants to extend this to 180 days. So what we're seeing are very moderate proposals to distinguish between tenants and actual scammers that are trying to defraud people, but they're pretending like there's no issue at all whatsoever. I mean, Bender over there is going to lie directly to your face and say that there's no such thing as squatters rights laws in the state of New York, even though we have adverse possession laws, even though we have the tweak to the 2019 law, and even though New York City says it doesn't matter, you're a tenant as long as you're there for just 30 days, even if you're not a tenant. Well, I mean, well, you, know, the, I, I, you know, I think, I think though, if someone, if someone owns a dilapidated a property that's dilapidated and have had no upkeep to it, and it's yes. harming the the neighborhood or the greater good of the people who live in the surrounding area, and you, it's it's like this for like a decade for some cases. So this is how you know Matt Binder is just lying directly to your face. First and foremost, if you have a property in disarray, that property can be condemned and it can be taken over by New York City. Secondly, notice how he mentions the 10-year timetable right there. That is the exact timetable, not a coincidence, in New York State law in which an adverse possession can actually be legal. But again, this is not the situation that we're talking about. Everybody, to a certain extent, is probably in favor of you have all these abandoned houses in, let's say, Detroit. They have all the copper wiring that is ripped out of them. Somebody moves in. They're only worth about $20,000 thousand dollars at this point in time right now they fix up the property they improve the neighborhood they get to keep the property that is the entire point of having adverse possession in the united states of america that's the whole point of having squatters rights in this country if you till the land if you improve the land if you make it better if you have it for a long period of time somebody just can't come back later and try to take the property from you because you put so much work in improving the property but as we find out through all of these cases they're incentivized to actually do the opposite. They're incentivized to start destroying the property as much as possible, run up the costs on the legitimate homeowner because these are extortion schemes. Now, remember, we covered a case out in Douglas in New York, the case where an elderly couple bought a home for their child who is an adult child with Down syndrome. And the reason that they bought it, according to the local news reports, is because they're expecting to pass away at some point in time and they want to be able to have their kid with Down syndrome move into the brother's home who lives in the same neighborhood. The nightmare begins. The house came with something unexpected. A man living in their home who they say refuses to leave. We couldn't believe it. We could not believe it. His name's Brett Flores. They cannot come here early when I'm not here. They have keys. They're the owner. This is what happened when the Landis tried to enter with an insurance inspector. They say Flores called the cops on them, even though they say they gave him 10 day notice. He wasn't a renter. Never. You didn't sign documents that said we have a tenant. Correct. Court documents detail in Flores' own words why he's there. A signed statement says he was hired by the former homeowner as his caretaker, was paid $3,000 a week, and his employment ended in January of last year when the man died. He claims he has a license to stay in the house from the previous owner. What a lot of people don't realize is in New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. 30 days. How can you have rights if... You have no lease. You're not paying rent. However, they can't do that because a man called Brett Flores, who, according to his own court documents, says that he has a right to stay in the property rent free because he was a caretaker, allegedly, to the previous homeowner, refuses to leave. On top of that, he is airbnb extra rooms in the property, or at least he has listings on some websites. So what is your right? Not only has Flores been living there, they claim he listed the home online to rent rooms to other people. The only way to try and get him out, they're taking him to landlord tenant court, trying to get him evicted. For other rooms in the property, and he appears to be running up the electric bill on these people, like we showed you in that segment. File the bankruptcy, so that prevents everything from going forward. Meanwhile, they've been paying all the bills. Leaving wow. windows wide open. 24 hours, including thousands of dollars in utilities. You have $2,400 electric bills, which are absolutely absurd. Well, according to his documentation, he was offered $40,000 to leave, but he wants $140,000, but that's not all. He's also suing for $2.8 million in punitive damages and $420,000 in treble damages. Now, again, according to the homeowner's family, he declared bankruptcy, which has stalled the eviction proceedings. 
thus delaying this even further. So while Matt Bender is lying to your face by omission, while he's talking about squatters' rights that don't exist in New York, but also talking about the specific time period, according to New York state law, that this is supposed to kick in, this is what's actually happening right now. This couple is being extorted for $140,000 for a property that they bought, that they own, that is not dilapidated at all whatsoever, because somebody says they're entitled to live there rent-free because of some ridiculous caretaker agreement. This is the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You're taking care of an elderly, sick, dying person, that person dies, and then all of a sudden you have the property, you have the home? Insane. Like then, yeah, they, the city should take over, the local municipality should take over and say, we are taking this property from you, you are delinquent on it, you don't care for it. We do that with other things. Like, y you should yeah. not be able uh, oh, like someone who wants to live there and, and actually care for it should be able to take it over after a certain period of time. Yeah, Binder, that's already the law. That's already what we have in terms of squatters' rights, the laws that you say don't exist at all whatsoever. But the thing is, that's not what's going on. These people are breaking in two properties. They're stealing the property from the homeowner. They're destroying the property in order to extort money from them. But you don't care about that because you're a propagandist and you want these people to be hurt because, you know, if you saved up your whole life in order to buy a home and you get screwed over sad day for you because he's a communist dork that looks like a homeless person himself and he thinks that's justice yeah i mean just to your point matt i think that the the squatter thing is just a concerted moral panic to make uh you know, the homeless uh, moral panic wasn't being inflamed enough. And so now the implication is that they're going to break into your home, that you're going to go away on vacation and they're going to break into your home and they're going to squat in your home while you're out like in Turks and Caicos. And then when you come back, like, well, these squatter laws, they're not going to be able to get them out. They're going to have trash the place. And it's to make, you know, homeless people seem even more dangerous. So this guy right here is saying, oh, this is propaganda against homeless people and all that. But none of the cases that I've highlighted are people who are in particular financial strain or who are homeless. In fact, there was a case I covered years ago in Bayside, Queens, very close to that Douglasson property and the Flushing property, I believe, where these people came into this house that was on foreclosure from the bank. They ended up renting it out on Airbnb to multiple different people, and the people who were renting this property ended up shooting up the entire neighborhood. 38th Avenue is normally a peaceful block here in Bayside, Queens, but this was early Sunday morning. Guns ablaze. It looked and sounded like a war zone. Surveillance video capturing it all. Residents say it's due to squatters at this home on the corner of 209th Street. They have out-of-state plates, and some don't even live here anymore. And they couldn't get them out, despite the fact that they had a state assembly person, a city council person, and a state senator all there condemning these actions because, yes, with the eviction moratorium at the time, but even absent that, these squatter protections are so absurd that you could seal a property in order to Airbnb it. They were called absentee squatters in that segment so these squatters are absentee squatters if you can imagine how ludicrous that sounds absentee squatters who are renting out the place that they are squatting in that they don't actually own renting it out on airbnb in ads like these for about two years now but today a crowd of residents and community leaders gathered to say they are fed up last weekend's bullets penetrating at least two cars and the gunfire going right through a child's car seat but they weren't homeless, and we have no reason to presume that they were homeless. These are sophisticated scammers. These are criminals, but they have to pretend as much as possible that these are innocent angel Aladdins because they can't address the heart of the issue. This whole segment is insanely dishonest. Or to give this new edge to them that will make it easier for what I can only assume are like tenants association. I'm not tenants associations. Uh, you know, uh, landlord. You know, landlords, landlords essentially tenants, yeah, landlords associations in places Real like Florida. Groups. Real yeah. State groups to like kick you out of your home uh, when you miss like one payment, like because you're now suddenly a squatter. So here we have the conspiracy theorizing from this dopey individual on the left, where they're trying to scare you guys into backing the squatters, into backing these home thieves by saying that this is all just a concoction, just a scheme to kick you out when you miss one rent payment. But the fact of the matter is. That's not the case. If you look at the proposals in the New York City level, which by the way won't pass, and at the New York State level, that's not what they're trying to do. They just want to actually have proof that you're a tenant of this property. And so now the implication is that they're going to break into your home. 
Like you're going to go away on vacation and they're going to break into your home and they're going to squat in your home while you're out like in Turks and Caicos. And then when you come back, like, well, these squatter laws, they're not going to be able to get them out. And by the way, it doesn't even have to be a situation where you're on vacation and somebody moves in and takes your property. There was actually an incident in a local news segment that we covered that when you dig into it is so absurd, so asinine. There's a reason why all of these cowards on the majority report can't address it. So a woman was unloading groceries from her car, moving them toward the home. This is what she was doing, but she left the keys in the lock while she was doing this. So somebody actually ran up grabbed the key, locked her out of the door. She called the police. But before the police got there, this person wrote his name on the mailbox slot because a lot of people don't fill that out. So when the police showed up, they said, listen, we can't adjudicate this on the spot. This is a civil matter. And it took three years for that eviction proceeding to go through. This happened in 2016. And then in 2019, this person was allowed to be evicted. And need I remind you, if this would have extended to the point of the COVID moratorium, that illegal squatter would have still been there. Also very important for you to understand, the legal tenant is the one who left her key in the lock in this particular situation. So all of a sudden, the legal tenant with all of the property that they had in their apartment is completely screwed over by this new illegal tenant that moved in. And guess what? They were completely out for a home for three years. So the legal tenant got totally screwed over in this instance. It's not just the landlords, even though the landlords oftentimes pay the financial costs. But in this specific case, the tenant was screwed over because a new person was in the apartment with all of her property for three years. So yes, this is an absurdity on top of an absurdity. We covered a case in Jamaica, Queens, where somebody stole a property, same kind of deal, and they ended up filing in their court documents as proof of possession, not a rent payment, not a utility payment, nothing of the sort. A Shake Shack receipt, uh, $25 from Shake Shack that they ordered at Uber Eats. And these dopes are pretending that this is not happening. These absolute buffoons are trying to gaslight you into thinking that this isn't a major problem, that they're not exploiting a loophole in the law, that there isn't an overloaded backlog in the eviction court system, and that this system isn't broken. They're like, greedy landlords are just trying to throw you out in a moment's notice. Again, already right now in this moment, it takes almost two full years on average in order to evict somebody. Almost two years in order to do that. You think we're going to go from two years to three days overnight? Not with these weak proposals that we're seeing from the state assemblyman and the city councilwoman that actually care about this issue. Not to mention all the people in New York State and New York City government that couldn't care less about this situation. Just a public service announcement for uh, any rich people who live in a rich suburb and uh, land banking and empty house. Just remember to change the law. This is housing advocate Purple Pingers, aka Jordan Vandenberg. And he's got a message for the owners of some of Australia's roughly 136,000 empty homes. Now, they go to this stupid segment of this Australian guy who's advocating stealing homes in Australia. Now, this particular person, at least in his videos, from what I've seen so far, even though he's advocating for stealing luxury homes that people actually take care of, is showing a bunch of dilapidated properties and whatnot. And they're trying to make this the main issue of this particular case. But as I said before, this is a deflection. Why are you looking to a segment all the way in Australia to discuss this issue when you're all New Yorkers? This is a red hot issue in the city of New York right now in this moment. And the reason why is because you know for a fact that this is not what is going on. You know for a fact that the stories out of New York City are absolutely crazy. They're not favorable to your narrative, which is why you're not covering it. No coincidence that when you have a story of a woman whose mother died had a Manhattan apartment. She ended up going to Spain post the death of her mother on a trip, comes back in order to clean out her mother's apartment. Police say when Vitell arrived, she found two squatters inside the 19th floor apartment. A struggle broke out and the victim was slammed against the wall and died of blunt force trauma to the head. Her body then stuffed inside a duffel bag. Police say the suspects then stole the victim's car, crashed it in Pennsylvania, and then took off. And gets murdered for her trouble by squatters that have moved in that this doesn't make the majority report segment because they're trying to propagandize 
surprised you. So the, so the point here is like these are houses that are just left vacant. They're not, um, uh, any, nobody's allowed to move in because the people who own it aren't allowed to get enough of a return from the people who would be tenants of it. Um, so they just are left there. And he points out like if I, I have zero interest and in particularly using my platform to say like, oh, the people that are holding these houses vacant, um, we should have, we should be again, we should be supporting them. No, absolutely not. Go ahead, Bradley. So again, we have the guy from behind the camera just lying to your face. He's like, listen, these are properties that are being held vacant. They're just they're just dilapidated and all that. And it's all because these greedy capitalists aren't trying to get a return on their investment. Well, let's talk about vacancy rates in the city of New York where this issue is prominent. Because according to a recent report from New York City, we're at in and around between 1% to 2% vacancy for the entire city of New York. Now, I want to point out to you guys out there in the audience that vacancy rates should be be elevated in the country because you have people moving in, moving out, and all these different various situations that would allow a property to be vacant, and they're completely misrepresenting that idea. So one of the left's favorite things to do, and you'll see the stat, by the way, littered throughout the comments section of this video, is they'll talk about how there's 15 million places, homes and or apartments that are vacant across the United States of America. Now, first and foremost, this is just a snapshot of of a moment in time of the vacancies that you actually have. This includes properties that are listed for sale that will only be vacant for a few months, rental properties that will be rented again in a few months, and it also includes vacation homes. Now, I already can see people on the left wing saying, hey, I don't like the idea of people having a vacation home. You shouldn't have a property that you're just enjoying for fun because I'm a sourpuss left winger and I don't like that idea. And you can hold that position. I'm not gonna argue against that right now in this very moment, even though you are in fact wrong. But the fact of the matter is those vacation homes are in vacation home destination locations. And these are not the same places where people are squatting. So when you cite this national number of 15 million homes or 15 million residences that are unoccupied, what you need to understand is that the overwhelming majority of them are only temporarily unoccupied, as in they're about to be sold and or rented. And the ones that are long-term unoccupied happen to be in areas that either nobody wants to live and nobody's squatting in or in areas that are vacation destinations. But in high demand places, that occupancy rate or that unoccupancy rate is actually extraordinarily low. And by the way, this is a problem. You want more unoccupied units because that shows that you have a moving market that would bring prices down because renters would be moving from place to place. But the fact of the matter is, in places like New York City where properties are going up, Unsurprisingly, the supply of those properties are incredibly low, and that is resulting in those properties going up. Again, look at this map for yourself circa 2022, and it's not that different in recent years. The vacancy rate for the top 75 largest major metropolitan areas are almost overwhelmingly in the lowest category, which is the sub 11.2%. And these are also places that are incredibly expensive to live, because contrary to what these complete and utter idiots think, the reason prices are high is not because the greedy capitalists are are trying to hold these units off the market so that they can elevate prices. And the only way to bring prices down is to lower that vacancy rate. In reality, low vacancy rate correlates strongly with high prices. It's almost as if, and call me crazy if you guys have ever heard something like this, a low supply with, with a high demand make prices go up. If only there was an economic law that could explain this in such a succinct way. So when these people are talking about occupancy nationwide and how, oh, you have all these properties, what they're not telling you is that these properties are disproportionately in areas where people don't want to live, like Detroit, where they used to have 2 million residents and now they're down under 1 million. Those properties are free for the taking. Feel free to go squat there if you want. That's where adverse possession is all about, is building up neighborhoods that have been abandoned or they're in vacation destinations that, again, don't have this high concentration of homeless people. But the places where this squatting is a problem are places where left-wing policy, left-wing regulation prevents people from building, where you have very low rates of unoccupied homes and or apartments, and it's done primarily by scammers not by homeless people uh so much of this media uh 
th- uh, basically pro landlord propaganda is pushed by like, these real estate groups and and, tra- and, and these uh, landlord associations. So Emma just vomits up right here that this is just being pushed by these real estate groups and they're absolute scumbags and it's these large corporate real estate groups when the fact of the matter is that's not the case. There's almost no stories in the media of large corporations having to deal with the squatters issue and this is despite the fact that in my fiance's previous building which was owned by a large company they did have an issue with somebody doing this on their floor and the reason why is because when you own a building with hundreds of units and you only have one squatter or a couple of squatters in that entire building as a corporation you're able to absorb the cost of that you're not able to be as easily extorted because it doesn't affect your bottom line as much and you have the staff to go to all the court dates in order to adjudicate this in fact these people benefit by driving these small landlords and homeowners out of business and again when you look at the situations that they're not showing you because they don't want to talk about the issue at hand what you find out is that you have average everyday homeowners people who end up in these crazy situations or small landlords that are stuck with the bill and threatened with jail if they don't support these very people that are stealing their property it's punishable by five years in jail so here you are you have to pay the upkeep of the house right I paid the and not getting any rent i'm not getting any rent i'm paying the gas and electric every month four stores repeated over and over and over again by irate and often unwitting property owners worry lines marking their faces who came to city councilwoman vicky paladino's office desperately seeking help hong chen has spent thousands trying unsuccessfully to get the squatters out of this home in Maspeth. John Sokran using his pension money for expenses on this College Point home he hoped would provide retirement income. And Susan Mascara, who has used up her savings paying for seven years of upkeep on this Bayside home she inherited from her mother. I'm in debt. My credit cards are pretty much maxed out. So let's be clear. We have Emma, who comes from a family that's richer than every single person that you're seeing right here in this particular segment. You know, the immigrant guy who has a property and that's his source of income these people who've had relatives die and they're trying to sell their dead relatives home to somebody who wants it emma's family's richer than all of them trying to convince you that this is just an issue for evil corporations and that you should just ignore it and let these people get screwed over let them get extorted they turned off the hot water and then reported that they had no hot water. It's a $250 fine per day, up to $15,000, punishable by five years in jail. Let them get jailed because people are running these extortion schemes against them. Yeah. I, I do, I do want to say, like, it's... It, What's what's yeah. really amazed me about this whole discourse <laughs> about the, the, the squatters and, and, and everything is that, like... I've seen like if you're a tenant, which a large portion of this country is, if you're a tenant, why the fuck do you care about this? Like, why do I see people who are renters yeah. or tenants out there or even someone who owns a single fucking home and that's their residence where they live? Why do you care about this? It does not affect you. It will never affect you. Bender, it's you a four letter word, C-U-C-K. So here you have Bender saying, oh, if you're a tenant, why would you care about this? Why would you even be concerned about this? Well, first and foremost, if you're a tenant and one of the people in the property that you're living in is one of these criminal squatters that's destroying the property purposely in order to extort your landlord, that directly affects you. And secondly, on a more human level, I don't want people to be defrauded. It is not a good society where thugs and criminals are able to extort people. And just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's not happening. These people have no moral principles at all whatsoever. Yeah, basically, you know, the problem is like people, uh, 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 this isn't a a conversation about like an abstract policy or something. Like this is something that people actually experience in their everyday lives directly. Not like, oh, this policy does that and that affects this. This is a direct effect on people. Like if you're walking down the street and, you know, uh, something happens to you, you get attacked, you get mugged, whatever, you directly experience that. So if someone's telling you that, you know, um, you know, the city's been, whatever city has been safer than ever, you're dealing with people who are like, well, I just had this happen to me. So how can you say that? This is the same dope that just a few minutes ago in this very video talked about how, oh, you get victimized by crime and that's the only reason you care about it. But in reality, like I said in that previous video, 
though, he thinks like that. He's telling on himself because he's like, oh, if it doesn't personally affect you, why do you care about it? Well, a lot of things don't personally affect me, you absolute buffoon. A lot of things don't personally affect you as a dorky communist living in New York because you have no actual interesting lived experiences, but that doesn't mean you can't be concerned about it. I mean, seriously, think about how stupid this rationale is in any realm of policy discussion. So if you want to talk about medical bankruptcies and people who got sick and then they couldn't afford it, they were driven into bankruptcy because they didn't have insurance and they have all these oppressive medical bills. Well, if you didn't get sick, if you didn't go bankrupt because of your medical bills, why are you even talking about it? Why should that even concern you? Because that didn't happen to you. You want to talk about the issue of mass shootings. Well, very few people in the United States of America per year are killed by rifles total, let alone mass shootings. These are unicorn events. So why would you even be concerned about it if it didn't happen to you? Again, if you try to apply this logic to any other issue that this guy was concerned about, that this guy actually cared about, he would not accept it and he would call you unempathetic. But in reality, in actuality, that's how he views the world. That's what he cares about. And by the way, the only reason that he is against the landlords in this is because he's a dopey communist that hates the rich more than he cares about the poor. In fact, in reality, if you actually cared about poor people, the number one thing that you would want to protect are private property rights because that's how you build an economy. That's how you build a middle class. But he's totally against that because it's all about vindictive hatred that this person has for other people, not about actually helping anybody. That's the dirty little secret of all of these commie dorks. They don't actually care about anybody except themselves and their own personal power. That's the reason why he's not telling you any of the actual stories that actually made squatting an interesting topic to talk about because he believes that that would subvert his ideological goals. Therefore, it's not worth sharing to anybody. This is how the majority report operates. You, you are literally hurting uh, laws that are established to actually protect you, the renter or tenant. Like, it is absolutely ridiculous. Like, I, I saw someone in the chat say, like, yeah, uh, you won't the live chat on YouTube. Yeah, like, but if you owned a property and this happened to you, you'd think differently. Well, guess what? Yeah, that's I will never own a second property and this will never right. happen. I'll never, mm -hmm. I don't know if I ever own a single property, but I'll never for sure own a second property. This will never happen to me. Exactly. So why the hell would I care yeah. that someone who's unhoused finds an empty, uncomfortable, cared for home and is living in it temporarily so there you have it right there bender's like listen i'll never own a property at all in my entire life who am i emma viglin's parents that probably own multiple properties so yeah it doesn't affect me and then he tries to pivot to say that the issue is unhoused people which by the way are homeless people again note the language change right there living temporarily in a completely abandoned property as if again these are any of the stories that people are talking about, as if these are any of the stories that people are concerned about. And by the way, squatting situations can happen in regular apartment buildings. So if you're renting from somebody else and somebody gets into your property while you're on vacation, this can happen to you. In fact, very tragically, my aunt's friend since childhood, he ended up passing away during the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, that period of time where in New York City, you had about 14 days in order to collect the body of your relative before they were buried anonymously in in an island between Queens and I believe the Bronx. Well, at that period of time, the family didn't realize that he had passed away, went over to visit him, and guess who was living in that apartment just a couple of days after this guy passed away? Two drug addicts that were taking over the property, stealing his stuff, destroying his stuff, and this is how these people found out that they had a dead relative. So this guy's trying to pretend like, oh, well, it's just it's just completely abandoned property. I mean, the, the woman abandoned the property that we talked about earlier when she went to go get groceries from the trunk of her car, and that's something that you guys shouldn't worry about because it's not it's not going to affect you. You know, if the yeah. homeowner comes and wants to take it back, they have to go through the legal process. Oh, no, but guess what? They'll most likely get it back. Like, this is absolutely ridiculous for anyone who's a, a working class or, or a middle class who even owns a single home and no more to care about this. Now, this point I found to be incredibly hilarious. The fact that Binder is saying, well, eventually you'll get your property back, so don't worry about it. But the thing is, these cases take on average 20 months. That's almost two years. But as we've seen with these other various examples, some of these people have been in court for seven years. No court case should go seven years, 
Why can't you just change the locks? Oh, I will be arrested instantly. Seven years. And by the way, when you're running up the electric bill, when you're damaging the property, they can't turn off your utilities. So you end up paying those fines daily that add up to about $15,000 maximum and can spend five years in prison. So God forbid you end up in one of these seven year long evictions and you run out of money being able to afford to pay for the electricity of the people that stole your property. I mean, you already have these cases where people are tapping their pensions in order to cover the bills and maintenance for these criminal people impersonating tenants. But Matt Bender says, don't worry about it. Suck it up because guess what? You'll get your property back eventually. Maybe. Who knows? You might be bankrupt in the process. But Bender says you'll get it back and he looks like a homeless version of Destiny. So trust him. He he's got it. It is absolutely. And I think I think the stat is in this country, I think like one or two million out of what? 360 million or whatever live in this country own more than one home. Like, give me a break that this is a major issue that people are caring about in this country. So what I love about this is they're like, oh, this is only 1% of the population that should be concerned about this. Although I will point out to everybody in the audience that 60 something percent of the population owns a home in the United States of America or lives in a home that they own in the United States of America. So it's nowhere near 1%. But what I find hilarious about this argument, other than the fact that it's completely untrue, the numbers, the scale completely off, which is unsurprising. These people don't understand numbers. They don't understand policy. They're directly lying to you guys out there in the audience is that less than 1% of the population is transgender. But Binder on his leftist mafia podcast did an entire lengthy segment. And I believe they did two actually about Anna Kasparian saying that she doesn't like some of this language surrounding the transgenders and how they're trying to change language for the broader population based on a population that's less than 1%. And they all had a bitch fest over it. Each and every one of these lefties melted down over that. Emma Viglund did segments on it. She tweeted about it. She bitched and moaned and cried about it. So when it's a 1% population, sub 1% population that they care about, we have to reorient all of society. But when you have a situation where people are having their property stolen by criminals when they're being financially extorted, we have to pretend it doesn't exist, obfuscate the issue, talk about some dope in Australia, anything and everything to avoid what's actually going going on in the city of New York and in this nation. Now, whenever I talk about these squatting issues, people say, Sean, who's on the other side of this? Who's actually making the argument for these laws to stay in place, for innocent people to be screwed over? Who actually takes these positions? And here you have it right here, four individuals, three in front of the camera and one behind the camera, all making the case for the criminals, for people to be extorted. But the thing is, they're too cowardly to actually make that case. The thing is, they're too weak-willed to actually stand behind their positions because not once throughout this whole course of this segment did they cover a single squatter's case in the city of New York. A single story that has actually grabbed the attention of people. They try to pivot to 10 years abandoned properties as if that's what anyone is talking about. So even these people who are defending those criminals can't even stand by those positions. They're too afraid to show even their stupid audience, who largely agreed with this segment, by the way, what's actually going on in the city of New York, because they know even the people that watch their show, even the people that are so uninformed that they think these people have anything valuable to offer, not just in what they say, but period, as human beings, would turn against them if they actually looked at the heart of the issue, if they actually saw these people that are being arrested, that are being extorted by these criminals that they're trying to paint to be innocent angel homeless Aladdins. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it just goes to show you how disingenuous these people actually are. I mean, again, Again, not one case, not one example that is relevant to the conversation was brought up. Instead, they had to pivot all the way to Australia and talk about properties that are abandoned for 10 years that people are going to fix up as if that is anyone's issue at all with this particular case. But you know what? Those are just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like this video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the majority report, trying to defend, but actually being too cowardly to defend squatters. Till next time.